Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel and here are 10 sound design ideas you might want to try on your synthesizer. Here we go! Ok, today once again I'm using my Yamaha EX5 because this is the machine that can do all the things, but if you happen to have another synth, don't worry, most of the things will work on your machine as well. So let's begin with the first one from the thumbnail, because that's why you're probably here. And yeah, if your machine doesn't happen to have an apagiator, you can easily substitute that by using a square wave LFO or a saw wave LFO. So let's take a look how that works. Let's edit the sound and go to the filter page. And at the moment we have this pure saw wave. Now uh, let's reduce the filter cutter frequency uh, to a reasonable amount. Uh, for example, one third of this and increase the resonance slightly and we end up with this sound. And now let's just go to the LFO page and um, change the wave from triangle to saw and increase the filter modulation depth here to the maximum. Like this. And now we've got this sound. Alright, now you just need to dial down the speed until you've got something you can work with and now we've got this sound. And now if you play an arpeggiated chord like this, then you have got an arpeggiated sequence. And um, yeah, this is quite nice and you can adjust the speed to your needs. And um, if you really want to have a life control over this, you can also adjust the speed to one of these knobs if you have one of them on your synth, that is. All right, next one. Okay, second one. Use the pitch bend wheel only on a selection of oscillators. So let's try this. Let's add another oscillator and I'm going to set up this in a similar way to uh, the previous one, but I'm going to use a double speed LFO for a beautiful effect. So let's reduce once again the filter cutter frequency and increase the resonance a bit. And then once again go to the LFO page, change it to saw wave, dial in the speed so it's um, double the speed of the LFO on the first oscillator. And once again crank up uh, the filter modulation depth all the way. And now let's go to the control page. And now turn off the effect the pitch bend wheel has on your sound by setting these to zero. Uh, in your synth there probably is a modulation matrix page where you can set this up. So let's go to the details here. And now let's turn on the pitch bend once again for oscillator 2. And um, yeah, what we want to change with the pitch band is of course the pitch of the oscillator. And um, let's set it up in a way so that we can shift the tone from C to G on the keyboard when we turn the pitch band wheel. And now we've got this sound. Listen to this. Now I turn the pitch band wheel. So now you can play chords without using too many fingers. This is a beautiful effect. Okay, number three. Use LFOs or envelopes to change the panning of one of the oscillators. So if your synth happens to have uh, the ability to move around um, oscillators in the stereo spectrum, uh, let's try this. So let's select the second oscillator here, then go to the LFO page once again, and now I'm in the second LFO, which is uh, possible here. And uh, let's change the wave to square or maybe to trapezoid here, and change the speed again to a multiple of the speeds I used before. So here I'm using speed 12 on the first uh, LFO, and so I'm going to use 24 here. So now the movement is once again synced up to the other movements. And the destination should be the panning. 
and the depth should be the maximum possible, in this case 127. And now we've got this effect. So, if I, if I turn off the first oscillator, you will hear this more pronounced. So now you can hear it's moving from left to right and back. Yeah, this will add much more depth perception to your sound. Next one. Number four, make use of the pitch envelope. Yeah, let's take a look at that. I want the second oscillator, which is the double speed arpeggiator, to move around um, from one higher octave to a lower octave. And uh, that's possible using pitch envelopes uh, in the X5. We've got this pitch section here. And now I'm going to set up the envelope so it will begin at an octave higher, which is represented by the value of 64, and then just drop down after playing three notes. So this sounds like this. Once again without that. And once again. And once again as an arpeggiated sequence. So now you can hear, um, yeah, it begins at a higher octave, so it's more emphasized at the beginning and then drops off. It's a nice effect. All right, next one. Number five. Use the filter cutter frequency resonance and key following to add additional harmonic content to your patch. So let's take a look at that. Let's add another oscillator to the mix. And now go to the filter page and let's choose a bandpass filter once again. And let's increase the filter resonance to the maximum. And as you know, Filter resonance means that all the parts of your sound, which happen to be in the range of the filter cutter frequency, will get emphasized. So uh, this results in this typical whistling sound you perhaps know. So let's reduce the filter cutter frequency here a little bit. And if I play the sound, you will hear that whistling filter sound. All right, so now let's dial down the envelope depth And now on most synths, you can specify a key following for your filter. So it moves along with the note you're playing. So the filter frequency gets pushed up for higher notes. So high notes don't get filtered out by accident. And on the X5, if you enter a value of uh, 32 here, this means um, the filter will follow along the octave exactly. So if I play a C, then the filter um, will be in the same frequency as the note I'm playing. All right, now let's take advantage of that and um, introduce another LFO which will work on my filter here. And let's set it to a speed of three, which again is a multiple of, yeah, three. <laughs> And let's use a square wave this time. So if you choose a value of 24 here, the filter frequency will switch between two notes one octave apart. Sounds like this. Now let's adjust this a little bit. Let's uh, let some parts of the original sound through here. We will now hear the original sound in the background and the filter modulating on top of it. And here's the obligatory reminder that this is YouTube and I need your support and you can support me by subscribing to this channel or sharing my videos, which is quite easy and doesn't cost you anything. And if you really want to go further, you can also go to my Bandcamp page and buy some music or to my Gumroad page and buy some of my patches. Links are in this video's description. Thank you.
Number 6. Use sample and hold for seemingly random events in your sound. This will connect directly to the last thing I did here, so we're working on the LFO once again. And now let's use the second LFO and choose a sample and hold filter here. And this will once again um, work on the panning of my oscillator. Um, maximum depth and the speed of 24 perhaps. And now you will hear that the sound will seemingly randomly switch between the left and the right channels. Alright, let's bring back the other oscillators and listen to the resulting sound so far. As you can hear, um, this is too loud, so let's bring down the filter gain here a little bit. Alright, number 7. Use the keyboard scaling to create a keyboard split. Yeah, I'm using the last free oscillator here and um, Switch it to a saw wave and I'll turn off all the other oscillators and now we have this sound. And now what I want to do is to create a keyboard split. On the X5 it's possible by using the zones feature, but on other synths you probably don't have that. So let's go to the amplitude menu and then go to the scaling menu. And um, I've seen a lot of synths which actually have these. So now I want this uh, saw wave oscillator to only play in the lower um, register here. So I'm going to reduce the scaling to the lowest possible value here on C3. Now if I play these nodes like this, you can hear it slowly fades away until I've reached C3 and there is no sound here. All right. So now we can continue working on this oscillator uh, with tip number 8. Number 8. Create a side chaining like effect on an oscillator using a square wave LFO and uh, the filter. So yeah, you, perhaps you know side chaining. This is the effect that you reduce the volume of a sound while another sound is playing using a compressor. So you get more clarity in your mix. And we can simulate this by using a square wave LFO. And here's how it's done. Go to the filter page once again, or set up the filter like this, so it's about two thirds the way in. <laughs> Reduce the filter cutoff frequency to around two thirds of uh, the possible value here. And now we have this sound. Then go to the LFO setup page and tell the LFO to reduce the filter cutoff frequency by the maximum possible value. And we'll sync up the speed to the other oscillators. So in this case, it's a multiple of three once again. Let's use six here. And make sure the wave of the LFO is a square wave. Sounds like this. So you can hear it's on the offbeat. And now let's introduce uh, the other uh, oscillators. So you can hear this in the mix. Number nine, use your effects in a way that they support your sound. So yeah, the effects section. On this synth, I can use an effect separately for each oscillator. But if your synth does have an effect section, for example, this arpeggiated sound will sound great uh, with a delay effect. I have this delay effect here and my arpeggiated sounds are the oscillators 1 and 2, so I'll route them to the second delay effect here. And um, the other sounds are a little bit more drawn out and pad-like, and I want some movement on them, so I chose a flanger effect. Let's turn that on, so I'll route them to the first effect. And now um, let's also add a little bit of reverb, which is the global insert effect here. But let's not overdo that because the reverb on this old workstation isn't too great. 
and also add a little bit of carbs for some more stereo spread so yeah maybe around uh, one fifth or so of the way up and now yeah let's listen to this all right so i'll try a small jam now Okay, uh, number 10 is just a small bonus. So if you have a patch that you like in particular, there's an easy way to get a new exciting sound out of that. So for example, I have this piano patch here. Let's listen to this. And so on. But now, Let's just go in there and replace all the piano samples with saw waves. And we'll end up with this. Really nice. Something you should definitely try on your synth. Yeah, that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting and useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. And see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.